Today we are going to compare the Energy Kodiak and the Goal Zero Lithium 1000. They are both lithium battery solar generators and I've had both of them for a couple weeks now and they are very different machines. So in this video we're going to talk about many of the factors that you should consider when choosing one or the other. So let's get started. Both of them have a lithium ion battery and both are rated to 1045 watt hours. And the battery management systems for both of these is quite different. The Goal Zero shows input, solar power, output, whatever you're powering, and then it shows you a battery indicator and percentages, and it's really easy and nice to look at. The Kodiak is quite different. You have amps, volts, and other things that most consumers don't really need to know. It does show wattage, but it only shows wattage for output. It doesn't show wattage for input. And battery indicator-wise, it has an LED strip, and it has green LEDs and then a blue one to show that you are completely fully charged. And if you go into the yellow or the red, it means that you need to recharge it. I personally prefer having a percentage, as in the Goal Zero. Next factor is going to be the charge cycle life. This means how many times you can discharge the battery and then recharge it. For the Gold Zero Lithium 1000, you can only do this 500 times. For the Energy Kodiak, 2000 plus. You can also do partial recharges with the Gold Zero Lithium and get a higher charge cycle life but one is rated higher than the other, and so the Kodiak will win in this regards, and that means it will last four times as long. The Kodiak is only 20 pounds, and the Lithium 1000 is 40 pounds. It's double the weight. When it comes to size though, the size is pretty much the same. They have slightly different dimensions, but it's around the same size. So expandability. With the Kodiak, you can add more lead acid batteries, or you can put drop-in lead acid replacements, and you can wire them directly to the Kodiak, and the Kodiak can charge and discharge as it pleases. With the Lithium 1000, you cannot add more batteries and you cannot chain it to other Goal Zero, but the Goal Zero can have the battery replaced and the Kodiak cannot have the battery replaced. It can have the battery serviced by Energy, the company that makes it, but you can't get a replacement. Goal Zero says that there's a replacement, but I haven't found one. I haven't found a price and I cannot find where they're available under the support option on their website. So that kind of confuses me, even though there is a replaceable battery option, I'm not seeing it. If you want to recharge the Kodiak or the Goal Zero with your own solar panels, you need to buy separate cables. The Goal Zero one is $50 and it can only allow for 240 watts of solar panel input. When, or you can buy the smaller cable that handles even less than that. When it comes to the Kodiak, you spend $35 and you get something that can handle 600 watts. And it's a very high quality cable and you can use it with any solar panels that you please. It's really nice. How many solar panels can you wire up to this thing? With the Goal Zero, you can handle only 240 watts. With the Energy Kodiak, you can handle 600 watts. This is huge. And now let's talk about the charge efficiency. When you put solar power into the Energy Kodiak, you have only a 1% loss. When you do that with a Goal Zero, you have 44% loss. So that means you need to buy almost double the panels. But guess what? You can't use double the panels because you can only put 240 watts in. So this is like the biggest factor. And we're gonna talk about this in a second at the end of the video, but this is huge. This is horrible. This is where the Goal Zero fails miserably. So let's do a theoretical example. Let's hook up 200 watts of solar panels to both the Energy Kodiak and the Goal Zero Lithium 1000. The Energy Kodiak will take 5.2 hours to recharge, but with the Goal Zero, it's going to take about 8.7 hours to recharge if you factor in efficiency. That means the same exact panels, but guess what? One takes a lot longer to recharge than the other. And this is where the Kodiak excels. So now instead of having solar power, let's hook it up to a wall charger. Both of them come with wall chargers. First, the Energy Kodiak will take only 10 hours to recharge, but with the Goal Zero, it's going to take 18 hours. That's crazy. So we've talked about recharging it, but what about power output? The Goal Zero is better with power output. It can handle 1500 watts continuously without any problem. The Kodiak Energy is only rated to 1000 watts continuous. It has a 1500 watt continuous inverter and I thought it was 1500 watt continuous when I first bought it, but when you read the manual, the battery can only handle 1000 watts continuous. So if you want to use this for large AC appliances, you're probably better off with going with the Goal Zero, but, but 
How in the world are you supposed to use 1500 watts continuous with the Goal Zero when it takes 18 hours to recharge? I mean, if you run the microwave or air conditioner for like an hour, and then you have to wait 18 hours till it recharges? Or if you use solar panels, you need full sunshine. There's only six hours of sunshine. So it's, it's great that, you know, the Goal Zero has a better output, but how in the world can you possibly use it it's, it's, it's crazy. How can you use it if you can't recharge the thing? If you have full power and you charge the Kodiak with full 600 watts, we're talking under two hours, all right? With the goal zero, let's say 240 watts, 44% is lost. You're looking at, I don't know, six, eight hours? I mean, that's under ideal circumstances. That is crazy. I do not like that. What should you do? If you want to do large output stuff, AC appliances or DC, I definitely recommend you build your own system. Check out my website. We talk about lithium batteries. There's some really good ones available. You need to buy your own inverter and it will be a modular system. But if you really don't know what you're doing and you want to buy a plug and play system, I would still go with the Kodiak. I mean, just with the solar input, charge efficiency, charge cycle life, and the expandability of the Kodiak makes it way better than the Goal Zero and it will last a lot longer. I just cannot see how somebody could use the Goal Zero Lithium 1000 in a living situation. If you need to depend on it and it takes that long to recharge, I, I don't see that. If you're doing weekend trips or you, you know, it's very infrequent that you actually use this thing, sure, the Goal Zero Lithium 1000 is great. Great power output, you'd be fine. But if you're actually using this in a house, like a cabin or a small tiny house or an RV or, or a boat or something, you definitely need to go with the Kodiak. Also, let's talk about price real quick, okay? We've got $1,000 for the Goal Zero. It has the same size battery as the Kodiak. The Kodiak's 1900, but you need to think about the charge cycle life in this instance. The Kodiak will last four times as long. The, the Goal Zero, you can swap out the battery though, but guess what, we don't know how much it costs. In Goal Zero, everything is overpriced. So instead of buying four Goal Zeros, why don't you just buy one Kodiak? You will be saving yourself 100% because it's gonna be double. So if you wanna do this in the long term, sure, the Kodiak is great, but let, let's take this a step further and think, okay, most people don't even need this much power. Maybe they need to power a laptop, some lights, and a fan. I mean, most van dwellers only need that. I mean, people in boats, they might need a water pump or some other stuff, but you don't need that much. So maybe some of you guys will be fine with a lead acid battery. If you're doing this short term, a lead acid is great and it's really cheap. But if you're doing this for anything more than, I don't know, four years, years, you definitely need to probably buy a lithium battery because it's way cheaper than lead acid when it comes to that many years. About five years, no matter what battery you have with lead acid will junk out on you. You can buy the really nice ones too. I've bought them all. I've bought the forklift Trojans. I've bought the VMAX and you know what? They're great. They are great, but guess what? They will bonk out in about five years max. So if you're using it longer than that, buy lithium. I hope you guys found this video useful. I try to cover all of it. Um, that should give you the gist of it. Um, and let me know if you have any questions or comments below, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.